So welcome to Let's Take a Tour. And many of you know us already, but if not, I am Val Librarian, um, and I'm Valerie Hill, Director of the Community Virtual Library, and my co-presenter today is Sidearm. And our agenda for today's presentation is to provide tips for guiding participants and sharing information in virtual environments. A virtual world like Second Life provides an amazing space for immersion, rich experiences in art, science, history, you name it. We hope that you will walk away today with new perspectives on how virtual worlds can be explored through sharing tours. And these tips that we give you today will also apply to presentations. Whether you're an experienced tour guide or you're a beginner, we want you to dig into what makes a good metaverse tour with a sense of presence and a sense of place beyond a Zoom window or a YouTube video. We all have unique voices and we all have unique perspectives, so certainly each tour guide can use a personal style. The tips that we will share today can be applied by anyone. Sidearm will share our scope before we head out. Sidearm. Thank you, Val. Thank you, Val. So it's good to see you all again. My name online is Sidearm and my offline name is James. I'm a practitioner in applied online presence, which includes virtual environment tours. A tour can be defined as a journey in which one or more places are visited for pleasure or for learning. A tour can be informal or it can be organized. Today we're going to do an interactive tour demonstration led by a guide. Our scope for today is tours given in Second Life for experienced Second Life participants. However, the principles demonstrated here apply to tours given in other virtual environments as well as Second Life and for inexperienced people in virtual environments as well as experienced participants. After our demo tour, we will debrief you for your thoughts on the material presented. So, as we proceed, please jot down any ideas that catch your attention for the debrief and for your future use. Back to you, Val. Thank you, Sidearm. Okay, for today's tour, we're going to head over to the Community Virtual Library. And I want you to pretend that you have never been there. I'm going to drop you a note card with the landmark. I'll do that right now. And I'll also put the slurl in the local chat. So you should get a note card. And here is the slurl. Um, I'm going to ask you all to stand up, and then I will meet you over at right outside the front of the Community Virtual Library. Meet you there. And I'll ask Sidon to stay here for a moment in case anyone needs help getting there. Will do, Val. Oh, okay, Ree, that'd be great. I'll wait. I'll wait five more seconds and then I'll pop on over, Ree. Thanks for doing that. Okay, I'm on the way.
here and you can hear me. Welcome to the Community Virtual Library. The purpose of today's tour is to share three selected highlights at the Community Virtual Library, a real library in a virtual world. So look down where you're standing and please stand on the stars which are a tribute to the librarians who helped create this library over the past 15 years. We're standing out front of the library. I'm going to ask you to use your camera to pull back using your alt key if you have want to use the alt and your mouse. Pull back and look at the building. It's a beautiful Mediterranean architectural style provided by our builder, Don Gray Mist. Use your camera to gaze around the building. Now I'm going to turn and face away from the library. And I'm going to ask you all to turn your camera towards me. I'm facing a red arrow across the courtyard. We're going to walk over and gather at the red arrow. And I'll stop using my voice for a moment or two until we all gather near the red arrow. I'll wait right here at the red arrow for a moment until you gather and check that you can still hear me. I'm using a speakeasy, which puts all of my words in the local chat box, but I'm also using voice. But for accessibility, it's always great on a tour to have a speakeasy for those that may not be able to hear. Take a look at the bookmobiles right here that you notice. We created these bookmobiles as an example of the library on the road across the metaverse. You can click on them, the small bookmobile or the large bookmobile, and you can get a copy filled with resources. It's part of the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium. Let's walk up the ramp and gather on this platform. And please gather anywhere around where you can see me. I'm going to sit up here on one of my slides. Today for our tour, I'm using this example about my book, Metamodernism and Changing Literacy, to demonstrate our tour today. You can see I'm sitting on top of one of my presentation slides. Some of you may have heard my talk about changing literacy, meta-literacy. Move around the platform and use your camera to look around at these slides. I often give presentations to students as a guest lecturer on meta literacy and digital citizenship. For classes in Second Life, such as John O'Connor's class in Dublin or Magwa's class in Turkey, as the students watch me sit on top of my presentation slides, they can learn concepts about changing literacy or meta literacy. I'm going to stand up and walk towards the back of the platform. In fact, I think I'll sit on my balance slide over here. Walk to the far side of the platform. Walk over here by the digital citizenship wheel and you'll notice a flag. Sit. A flag that says, think before you post. That's a good digital citizenship tip. Everybody walk back to the back and you'll see that flag. Now, listening to a lecture, going through all of these slides can be challenging to the students' brains because they become overloaded with all this information as I am lecturing. Sidearm shot a video, a machinima, of one of my talks with 14 timestamps on all the various concepts that were covered. Now, that's a lot of information to take in. And sometimes the students' brains just get full it's so much to just listen and listen and listen to all this, this conversation about all these issues and concepts. And they need a break. They need a break in their brain from all these slides and all this information that's coming at them. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to ask you 
to follow me, first, I'm going to put my flag on so you can see me. I'll wear my flag. Think before you post. All right, now you can see my flag. Follow me down the ramp, please. We're going to walk down this ramp, and then we're going to go a bit to the left, follow the, the rocks, uh, the stone walkway, to the black room. I created this black room to represent the dark side of digital culture. And there is a dark side, which I bring up in my presentations to students. Walk inside the blackness. Walk through the black tapestry hanging as a door. Feel free to sit on a bean bag should you choose. Use your camera to find me. And you might feel a little cramped in here. That is intentional. The dark side of digital culture is uncomfortable. Look at the sign above me, if you can use your camera. Tilt it up, the dark side of digital cult culture, some of the issues that we face. That too is intentional. It's difficult to cam up and, and look around here and find what I'm talking to you about. It's not always easy to find information in digital culture. Look at some of the dark issues that we face in this black room. Follow me over to this next slide, the one above me. Too much information. Too much information can be as problematic as too little information. I'll stand over here. FOMO, hmm, anyone know what that is? Type in the local chat if you do. FOMO, another problem we face. Think about the many teenagers. I hear they sleep with their cell phones right beside them because they have FOMO. Yes, fear of missing out. Fear of missing out, there's something going on out there. There's always something going on out there. There's an anxiety that an exciting or interesting event may currently be happening elsewhere often aroused by posts seen on social media websites. I'm going to walk over here into the weeds. Hmm, but I didn't have my flag. You might even not see me over here in the weeds. Information is hard to find in our post-truth world. And what about confirmation bias? Look at the Venn diagram above me up here. Confirmation bias, that's when we follow those people who think like we do, who agree with our opinions. It's so easy for all of us to do it. In fact, it's inevitable that we want people to agree with us and we want to follow them. But that's not how we learn. We don't learn through other people's perspectives. Well, this black room that we're in when I brought a class of students here, this really got them to open up and start a conversation and really start talking and asking me questions because it's more immersive than sim simply lecturing them. So here we are, all are together as avatars inside this black room in the metaverse which is a place where digital citizenship will be essential in the future. So thank all of you for coming into the black room and think about this black room and all of its issues in digital culture. How do we get out? Well, we only get out through understanding digital citizenship. Now this concludes our demo part of the tour and now we're all going to move up to the upstairs reading room inside the library for our close. I'll put the slurl in the local chat here and I will meet you there. If you're on a beanbag just stand up, click on the slurl and I'll meet you in the upstairs library 
Reading room. Sure, so decide on your purpose. What do you as a tour guide want participants to get from your tour? We're all here now, Zal. Great, thank you, Sight. So hopefully everybody's camming in on the poster right beside me, the sign, and you'll see preparation is our first tip. Second tip, gathering spot. A tour guide should allow time to gather and be visible to them. A flag or a colored object helps people see the tour guide and the brain loves color. I'm gonna take my flag off now because you're all seeing me. Tip number three, feature the purpose. What will the participants encounter, learn, and take away from the virtual place? Tip number four, instructions on moving. Give clear directions about where to move and copy the slurls, that's the location in the virtual world, to help them teleport, have a colleague, help by staying behind if anyone's getting lost. Tip number five, pacing and focus. Give time for the participants to experience the simulation with enough information for deep learning and critical thinking to occur. Tip number six, interaction and immersion. The best use of a virtual world is the sense of presence. I'm going to cam out here just so I can see all of you here. We're all in this room together as avatars. We're in a place. So a tour should take advantage of that sense of presence as avatars. Movement and interaction is essential. Otherwise, why not just show a YouTube video? And tip number seven, closure and debrief. Allow participants time to reflect on the experience, either in voice or in text or with a follow-up in some way. Sidearm will now debrief. Sidearm? Thank you, Val. Okay everybody just to be clear you had a demo tour and we will now debrief your experiences of the interactive tour demo and also the tips for a great virtual tour yes I have a series of questions that I'm going to ask in voice and I invite you to respond in text. If you want to respond in voice, just uh, do raise hand and then I'll call on you since there's 30 of us here. Let's kick off with the first question and also fair warning, if nobody says anything, I'm going to call people at random. So before we start with the responses, number one, please recall your experience of the Community Virtual Library demo tour and any notes that you took. And now recall the presentation of the seven tour tips. For your reference, here are the tips again. One, preparation. Two, gathering spot three feature the purpose four instructions on moving five pacing and focus six interaction and immersion seven closure and debrief you guys are doing great you're already spawning thank you john mentioned the importance of a good bill Josane says pre-plan and organize so these are open questions. The first question is, what caught your attention about the tips? Jerkin says, a well-paced, non-hurried voice and speakeasy. John says, sitting on the slides is a great way of focusing attention. 
Dex Ditto's builds. Nayala, you had a comment earlier, making sure slides have time to res. Thinker says thorough coverage. Pi mentions clear directions on where to go. Zri mentions giving directions, ditto's that. John says the flag is useful. Ava appreciates the pace, encouraging looking at things. Sherkin, ditto's wearing a marker. Gentle suggests moving slightly from the landing spot and adjusting landing marks. I see other people typing here. Marley suggests picking out a few visual examples to focus on. Megs reinforces number four. Uh, I don't remember what number four is. <laughs> Maybe you could mention it. Rihanna says, remember the group size. The more avatars, the slower things will be. Uh, instructions on moving is number four. Thank you, Lear. Oh, good. Sharing, sharing slurls in real time, pacing it in chat as well as on a note card, uh, Zuri reinforces that, especially for people that are lagging. John reinforces closure and debrief. Thinker hopes there will be a video on this. Uh, Re warns us that some regions cannot accommodate a lot of avatars. And Lear as an experienced SL participant, use double click. Good, you guys are doing great. That question is still open. I'll keep adding to the questions. What caught your attention on the demo tour? What caught your attention about the demo tour, this demo tour? I see people are typing, LV's typing, Pi is typing. Lori suggests a landing zone nudger. I noticed the black room. Ellie Ditto's decks. Zri is uh, dittoing the, the dark room to enforce the main points. What caught your attention about this tour? Another ditto on dark space. Thinker says it went smoothly. Rhiannon suggests using a back channel chat. What caught your attention about this tour? Ava Ditto's focusing with space. Did you learn any, what did you learn that you didn't already know about real libraries in virtual environments, guys? What did you learn that you didn't already know about virtual libraries? Marley likes the posters. Shurkin likes the voice and warmth and encouragement. Rhiannon likes the graphics. Marley says she couldn't see the graphics. Dex says learning through tour rather than lecture. John says the multimedia experience. Thinker suggests turning off the local music. Good. I'm going to keep adding to the open list of questions. So what did you like about this presentation today? What did you like? What could you take away with you for your own presentations? It had a leader and a sweep. Uh, Marley suggests getting reactions from tourists. John likes a perambulatory lecture. And Dex, again, like the pace and lead. I'm going to keep going with the open questions. Rhiannon liked the uh, pointing to the interior of the back building, that uh, black building, and the, and the weeds as visual metaphors for getting lost in the dark web. And Pi likes the debriefing. What did you wish for today's presentation? What would you 
add in the future as well as what did you like Marley wants the music library Zinnia wants treats and gifts Marley liked the beautiful building Shirkin liked the length Lear likes the company Shirkin likes the length short and sweet Zinnia likes the way we came back the weeds my gosh you guys are popcorning now I love it You would like a glass of wine, Sean. Yes, it is over the yard arm for you in Ireland. Rhiannon wishes to slow the pacing down for texture loading. Thinker likes the audience participation. Marley dittos the drink. Mixing voice in chat, John likes. A little more information about the real library from Tori. Ava likes coming back to a place to sit. Lear said, liked the fast pace, but it would be harder for their friends who have tech issues. And Dex might have liked a normal walk instead of a teleport to the debrief point. John liked the finishing room. Zri would like a summary of notes before and after the tour to recall the information that they've just learned. Less cluttered spaces for newbies. The time for discussion and debrief. Uh, let me add to the open questions. What can you use for your own tours going forward? Think about your work or work of others that you want to share. What can you use from today that you can use for your going forward? John likes the tour tips poster. What can you use going forward? Everything, says LV. I see people typing. Uh, Tori can use Val's instructions on how to see and follow her. John will sit on his slides from now on. Dex is dittoing Lori. Shirkin can now train folks to give their own tours. She can ripple. The ripple effect. Uh, Zri likes the idea of combining toasters and 3D props. Rhiannon likes the tour tips poster as a note card that could be given to presenters. And Meg says this has been helpful. Now, not overloading. I'm going to add one more open question, and then I'll be turning things over to Val. Uh, dittoing on a debrief. We already talked about what would you add. This is my favorite question. What would you? What hasn't been said yet that needs to be said? Lori says useful tips for the virtual world, best practices in education, immersive experiences tours. He will adapt these tips for those hosts. Thank you, Lori. What hasn't been said yet that needs to be said? Tours are not easy with lots of people. Thank you, Ellie. That everyone's perception can be addressed if one wishes, says Shuriken. Marley mentions venues, different venues might require a different approach. Shuriken says, what about audio and smell? and text and challenge. Zinnia wants to find out later how Re does her chat text to direct for different colors. Gentle is already making suggestions to Lori to have a demo tour like this one to demonstrate what's going on and Lori dittos that. John uh, reminds us people will always get lost no matter how careful you are. Thinker likes the closing question. <laughs> Rihanna and Ditto's group size matters. So now that you guys are simmering and come to a boil, Val, I'm handing it over to you. Okay. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you very much, sidearm. Okay. 
Um, so we've talked about a lot of tour guide information today, and you've all added a lot of great perspectives on it. And I did, you know, want to mention to you that the purpose wasn't to show you the library. It was just to give you a glimpse of a topic and a presentation to demonstrate a tour. So um, I know, but that's great that someone said, I would have liked to have seen more about the library. That's something about a tour too. You want people to want to come back and see more. And there's so much more on this island that we could have shown you. I am gonna give you a handout now, and it's a folder um, with, called handouts let's take a tour so let me give you this folder first and you will have a little bit more information in here as well as a takeaway you got, get your own comment uh, your own uh, think before you post flag that you can wear so you'll find the note card in there let's take a tour tips by valerian and sidearm and a flag so you can open up that folder let me know if you didn't get it um, and I, I loved hearing all your various perspectives as, as we were debriefing. I've been on a lot of tours where, you know, the time goes over and you don't get a chance to, to talk about what it is that you experienced. And in so many different things, I think, in digital culture, there's very little time to reflect because there's always something else out there, you know, calling for our attention. And so I think um, I really like that tour tip. Number seven, that at the end, if we have a little bit of time to reflect on what it is that we experienced, it just helps us to better understand and to, to be able to plan for the next tour in a better way. And there's no perfect tour. We have to remember that. There is no perfect tour because everyone is at a different level of expertise. And, um, there's, and it's always going to have a little bit different focus. So it, it's not ever going to be perfect, but if you can embed all of these different tips, they just help us so that they can always be a learning experience. So um, I want to build. And we can continue. You can build on that uh, sidearm. But I do want to say, ask a question. Do you want to plan a tour? Has this made you excited to maybe plan a tour? Let us know.